Hi, welcome to the End of Life Journey and Beyond, Sands of Time. My name is Lisa Strauss Lawrence. Hi, Susan. Hi, Lisa, and I'm Susan Caperso, End of Life Doula, and we're so happy that you could join us today. We have a wonderful guest with us today that's going to share some great, powerful information that everybody needs to know about pre-planning, whether it's before you leave, during, after you leave, this is all important information for everybody. So we'd like to um, welcome the wonderful Linda Fostak. She's the crisis planner on Long Island and globally, just not Long Island, and she's doing so many good things in the world right now. Lin uh, Linda is a uh, disaster crisis planner. Okay, so she gets you in place with her pre-planning and um, helps you with struggles after there's a crisis in the world, in your family. And this is really pertinent to this last year um, that we will share as well. So welcome, Linda Fostak. How are nice you, Linda? Nice to see you, Linda. And I know you too. It's great to see you again. I know. It's wonderful to be here with you, Susan and Lisa. This is, you know, planning for the end is something that actually starts long before you get there. Yeah. And, you know, we all know we need a plan, but what unfortunately what happens with many of us, we just like, well, it's important, but important always gets put off. Yeah. We forget about it until it becomes urgent. Well, if nothing else, 2020 showed us how quickly things can turn into urgent. And I think a lot more people are aware of the fact that they need to get plans in place. And for, for many people, we have a million excuses about why we can't plan. And, you know, we, we become these crazy people. Like some people think they're Captain America, they're invincible and nothing's ever gonna happen to them. And some right. people have that black cat syndrome where they think if I make a plan, then bad stuff's gonna happen. And then you have the Mr. Know-it-all that says, I know I've got everything covered, but do they? Hmm, exactly. Those things that blindside you that you didn't think about are the things mm -hmm. that'll hurt you the most. And then you have somebody that, you know, I call the Howard Hughes horror. I mean, this is a man who was a multi-billionaire and he had no will when he died and it took decades for them to sort out his estate. And then finally, you have um, what I call the Irishman. You know, they're still looking for Jimmy Hoffa's body 40 years later, right? Um, do you want to send your family on a scavenger hunt without a list? Mm -hmm. So. Those are some of the excuses, but people have excuses like time. They don't have time. Oh, well, I have time. I don't, you know, it's not something I need to do right now. Or I don't have the money. They think it's going to cost a lot of money to, to put plans in place. And, you know, maybe there are some things that cost money, but there's many things that you can do that can give your peace of mind and give your family peace of mind that don't cost anything at all. Um, you know, we can have every excuse in the world. They're overwhelmed. They don't know where to start. You know, that's what the crisis planner is here to do. We, I'm here to give you the tools and resources to eat the elephant one bite at a time. So, right. and I've I try seen a few of your tools, Linda, and they're, <laughs> they're absolutely wonderful. And I know you're distributing them nationwide right now at, the po at this point. I don't know how you've gone globally with them yet, but tell us about some of those tools. Well, you know, one of the tools that I have is this book called And Now What? And it really is a life planner and survivor's checklist. And it goes through the eight essential pieces of planning and allows you to write everything down. It gives you a checklist of everything, all the documents you need to put together in one place. And so that everything is there when a crisis occurs, not only for you to find it, but for your loved ones. And really what is planning about? It is about for the people that are gonna be left behind if something happens to you. Exactly. You know, Linda, I, I need this book especially, you know, I have two boys and I just know if anything ever happened, they would be lost. Mm -hmm. They'd be lost. They don't know anything about anything. My business would be gone. Everything would be just gone because 
they don't know what to do. So this is perfect for everybody. Right. And, and it's really, I, I've broken it down into a four-step process. There's four simple steps. First, figure out what you already have. And many people are surprised that they have a lot of stuff. And I mean, we just went through getting every, everything ready for our taxes, right? And you got all those statements at the end of the year, your financial statements, your social security statements, your, your insurance renewals. As those things come in, you put that together and you update it with the latest version of it. So you start assembling what you have. Now you look at what am I missing? And then you focus on filling in the gaps. So am I listing, missing some key legal documents? Um, you know, people don't, I mean, they think about legal documents, they think about wills and trusts, but probably some of the most important legal documents are your power of attorney, your living will, and your healthcare proxy. And one that people don't even think about is that HIPAA document that you sign in every doctor's office. Um, I know when my husband's mom would be sick in the hospital and he'd call Florida, you know, to find out what was going on. His mother didn't understand that he, she had to assign her children to have access to health information. And so the hospital wouldn't even tell him that she was in the hospital. That's how crazy it was. So that HIPAA document is also one of the, those documents that will survive after the person passes away because you need to be able to get the explanation of benefits and take care of any financial responsibilities when somebody does pass away. And that HIPAA document will allow you access to that information. Um, the living will, that's if you are incapacitated that is going to tell people what you want or do not want done. Do you want to be intubated? Do you want a feeding tube? Do you want to be resuscitated? What kind of testing do you want? Do you want to have an autopsy? There's all kinds of things you can put in that living will. And once you have a living will, then you can assign a healthcare proxy who's somebody that you know and trust who will do the things that you want in that living will. It takes all the responsibility away from the person in terms of, you know, how many siblings never speak to each other because a decision is made in the hospital to pull the plug and, oh my God, you killed mom, you know, but mom didn't want all this stuff to happen. But if you have it in writing that eliminates all that family conflict, yes. um, you know, so the legal piece is probably one of the pieces that a lot of people are afraid of because it does cost money, but there's ways of doing it less expensively. You can um, belong to um, Legal Shield. You can get a will done that way and you can get other things done very inexpensively. If you have an extensive estate, obviously you need to talk to an estate planner. If you've got Medicaid involved, that requires a, an attorney that's experienced in that. Your insurance, I mean, there's so many different types of insurance and most of us have multiple insurance agents. Um, there, you know, you have your um, property and casualty insurance, you have your life insurances, you have your long-term care insurance, you have all kinds of, you know, you can get, your health, different types of health insurance and supplemental health insurance, which, you know, that supplemental, those supplemental policies can get, um, can actually pay you to help, comp, you know, pay bills if you're unable to work. So things like combined or AFLAC, you know, a lot of people don't, and they're very inexpensive policies and they, they actually can be very, very um, beneficial when you have a stressful time. Linda, was it you? I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, was it you that I heard the story about um, a long time ago about the uh, the older man? Oh, with the long-term care? House? Yes, the long-term care insurance. That's one tell, of the things. Tell this, because this is such a powerful story. You know, long-term care insurance used to be like a term life insurance policy that if you didn't use it, all that money went for nothing. There's now all kinds of hybrid policies that are combined life insurance with the, you know, like whole life insurance, they actually have value. 
and a long-term care policy. So you really need to sit down with an insurance broker to get all the details to find out what's right for you. But in this particular case, the father had Alzheimer's. The children spent a lot of, you know, well, they spent all of his money for home care to keep him home as long as possible. And finally, he had deteriorated where they had to put him in a nursing home. And when you go into a nursing home, of course, they want to know what your assets are. I mean, a nursing home on Long Island is $15,000 a month. That'll burn up money very quickly. And, you know, to get on Medicaid, you, you turn over that house, which was the only asset he had left, to Medicaid. And he passed away some six months later. Now, Medicaid does not make you sell the house until the person actually passes away because in their wisdom or in their thinking, they think that somehow you're going to get better and then they don't want you to be homeless. So they, you actually do not sell the house until the person actually passes away. It's kind of a strange thing. So now they're cleaning out the house to sell it now that he's passed away. And that's when they found it tucked in the bottom drawer a long-term care policy that nobody knew about wow. that would have not only saved the house, but all the money they had spent on home care. And, you know, that, that goes to the importance of, you know, once you have all these things in place, making sure that they're organized, that people can actually find the documents in one place. You don't send them on that scavenger hunt without a list and then communicate the things that people need to know. They don't need to know everything. They need to know long-term care. They need to know, probably if you have a reverse mortgage, because frequently you have, it's an equity line that could be used to, to finance home care if you don't have a long-term care policy or something. You can certainly use that. So those two things, are, and, and where to find it, where to find things. That's really the only, they don't need to know how much money you have. They don't need to know what it's in. They don't need to know what investments you're in. They just need to know where to find it when they need it, <laughs> you know, because a lot like my parents generation, they were, you know, the uh, the generation of the Great Depression. They didn't like to share information with anybody. <laughs> you know? So it, it's all about the preparation before. And the earlier you do that, the easier it is because you can get off the worry go round. You can stop worrying about all this stuff you know what if this happens what if that happens i can remember my husband was um a diabetic he had a lot of health issues he was you know and i'm working and as a pharmaceutical rep on the road in brooklyn in manhattan driving to the city all over the place and i'm thinking you know what if something happens to me you know, once he became disabled, that was really important. What if something happens to me? What if I became disabled, first of all? And so I'm like, okay, my company had disability, but long-term disability, but that only covers 50% of your salary. Mm -hmm. So I had a gap disability policy just in case something happened to me and I couldn't work. Then I said, you know, he's not, you know, what if I die? So I had a million dollar life insurance policy on me to take care of him if something happened to me. I also got my long-term care policy around that same time. And I was, you know, in my fifties when I got my long-term care policy, but that my premium was much lower than it would be if I had waited until I was 65. So all of those things I thought ahead about how, you know, and then, when I was driving, I mean, I'm a careful driver, but I wasn't like worried. Oh my God, what if something happens to me on the road? You know, you, you're able to focus on what you need to focus on. And that's the beauty of having the plans in place. And those plans include, you know, like I said, your legal, your insurance, your financial planning. How are you going to live, you know, if you lose your spouse? You know, I, one of the things that's in this book is a, a budgeting, two budgeting pages, income and outgo. You know, if you lose a social security check or a pension or whatever, how is that going to affect your ability to stay where you are? And so it, this is a complete life planner. 
And then the second part of the book is what to do when somebody actually passes away and the order to do it and what not to do and, you know, to get you through the process. You know, one of the things that a lot of people will tell you, 95, they did a survey, 95% of the people out there believe that pre-planning your funeral is a good idea, yet less than 5% actually mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. I can wow, tell that's some, some statistic. I didn't realize that. And today, those are, um, that pa the payments to the pre-planned funeral are in escrow accounts. They're completely transferable to wherever you are. You can move it around. They pay interest, which means they rise with inflation. I mean, my mother had a prepaid funeral and, you know, it was prepaid, you know, a number of years before she passed. And the inflation actually covered, we could actually do more than we had planned to do because there was more money in the account. When my husband passed away, I was so grateful. He had every detail planned that it was a celebration of his life. And I was able to be in that space of celebrating his life instead of panic over what I wasn't going to be able to do. And that happens to so many people. They're just yeah. so overwhelmed and they, they guilt spend when they, you know, when you go to the funeral parlor, uh, you know, and then there's, there's a lot of things you can do to protect yourself. You know, I mean, to this day, I mean, my, mom and my husband passed away four years ago and I still maintain identity protection on both of them <laughs> because you never know people are stealing social security numbers and using things that shouldn't be used and it's such an inexpensive thing to do that for me it just makes sense it makes sense yeah you know Linda I also want to ask you because it's not all about this paperwork Right. Yes. All everything you talked about is so so important. But as the crisis planner now, you're thinking of all the different types of crises. Exactly. Crises. Did I say that right? Or crises. Disasters. Crises. Crises, crises and disasters. So talk about something like um, tell us about a flood in your basement. Well, you know, and I mean, during COVID, I've had a number of disasters in my home, shall we say. Um, and knowing what to do when something happens is just as important as being prepared. Um, I have to say, I'm fairly knowledgeable about things in my house. I One of the things that I have developed is a whole home system, a crisis planning home system. It's an emergency system for your home. And it includes a watertight box and a whole bunch of tools to label your gas and water shutoffs and your circuit breakers and uh, it has water leak detectors and all kinds of things. But so that when something happens, instead of running around like a crazy person, you actually go, oh, so we shut down on what was it? March 16th. So St. Patty's Day was the next day. Now, my husband had been gone for almost three years. I hadn't done a lot of cooking. And I said, I'm going to make corned beef and cabbage for St. Patty's Day. And I got the world's smallest corned beef and the smallest head of cabbage because I'm all by myself. So I mean, how much can I make, right? I had three burners on the stove going, everything's cooking away. And I could everything's done. I turn the stove off and the one burner, the gas burner would not go off. Oh. The valve failed in the open position. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I've had valves fail in the closed position where you couldn't turn the burner on, but this wouldn't go off. And the gas is still burning, you know, I'm like, okay. But because I had my things labeled in the basement, hmm. I went downstairs, turned off the gas to the stove, no problem. Okay. It was six months before I could get an appliance guy in to fix it, but that was okay. I had something else I could cook on in the meantime, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it was like, okay. Um, then uh, another time I, I'm on a zoom call and I, all of a sudden I hear this screeching alarm and I'm like, what's that? I take my headset off and I'm like, oh, that's one of the water leak detectors because it's like really loud. I had just turned the water on to the, my outside faucet outside and there was a pinhole leak in the pipe 
inside my basement. So there was just a tiny little bit of water on the floor, but I was able to turn that off and stop it before I had a major flood. Yeah. So it's about being in control. And that's what, you know, all of the planning that we do is, is about being in control. And, you know, the first step to planning is think about what could go wrong. And whether it's, I mean, you look at all the natural disasters. I mean, look what happened in Texas this winter with all the pipes freezing and, you know, it was awful. You know, you know what I love, Linda? I love that your kit not only has the different books in it, right? Right. Tell me about the different books quick, but it also it also has a the cardboard filled with uh, with all the sensors and all the tools that need right. To be you get the whole toolkit. You get a watertight box to put all your documents in. Uh, you get you know you when you buy a car, you get it. An, an oper operations manual for, well, I wrote an operations manual for your house. So this tells you everything that you need to know about all the systems and things that can go wrong. And, you know, and then there's other books that, you know, this is like getting to know your house. When somebody has a house, what's it made of? What condition is it in? Does it need to be replaced, repaired, or thrown out? Um, how many outlets are there in a room? What circuit is it on? You go around and you look at each thing and you actually get to know what, what you actually have. Then, you know, when, one of the things that happens in a disaster too often is people don't have a record of what they own. So the insurance company just gives you a number and you need to document with pictures everything that you have. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not gonna document individual things because that takes a lot of time, take a picture from four different directions in each room, open the cabinets, take a picture inside the cabinets. If you have specific things that have value, take pictures of those, put that on a flash drive, keep that in your, in your box, make another copy, keep it someplace else. When disaster does strike, before you haul everything out to the street, take pictures of the damage as is. Because if you don't have those pictures, the insurance company has no idea what, what you're talking about. Um, and don't be afraid to get a licensed insurance adjuster because the insurance company adjuster is only after the, you know, their interest is in the insurance company. Whereas a, a licensed insurance adjuster is looking after you. Uh, you also want to document any of your improvements you've made in your home that because there's a tax liability when you sell a home, especially if you don't purchase within a certain amount of time. So you have to think about, okay, I've been in my house 41 years. I think I paid less than $70,000 for my house, which is now worth 600,000. You know, I've done a lot of things to the house over those years, having those things documented means that you have less actual increase over what you actually paid that had could possibly be a tax liability. And then this, these last two books are really about your, your planning. This is the eight steps of planning, your medical information, all that stuff, you put that all in one place. Again, that's all information that could be very beneficial, especially if you're not able to um, make decisions yourself if somebody else has to find stuff. So you put it all, all together, you put it in the box, put all the documents in the box and file folders, it, the box will hold, it's, it's a Pendaflex box. So it'll hold Pendaflex files. It's watertight, which is tends to be our biggest problem here on Long Island. I do uh, sell kits with fire resistant safes for the West Coast because that's more of their problem. <laughs> they have a water shortage unlike us, uh, but I love the fact that um, also, you know, not even giving this for a housewoman gift, that is huge. That's gonna be the best present that they ever receive. Um, but also, you know, realtors have been picking, picking mm -hmm. this up, yeah. you know, to give to their home buyers and, and, you know, new people that come in and it's just a great thoughtful gift to give to somebody. I exactly. Think. But, you know, basically all planning is about three things. You want to recover as quickly as you can. You want to avoid family conflicts and you need to control the chaos. If you have 
effective plans in place, you can accomplish all of those things and really live by not being on that worry ground. Get off that worry ground because worry is not going to help you. <laughs> and, you know, and I love how, you know, what my piece is a lot of the physical planning piece, but then there's the legacy planning piece, which I know, Susan, you address so well. And those are the stories. People are hungry for those stories. They want to know their family history. They want to know those things and they want to have somebody to help guide them through that transition. And then afterwards, there's so much that people go through afterwards, the grief process. Um, and there is no right or wrong way to grieve. And I mean, this book actually also deals, talks about after because and I don't spend a lot of time on it because it's not my area of expertise, except for my own personal experiences. But grief is something that you can't judge somebody that takes a longer time to get through things. And you can't judge somebody that seems to bounce back. Um, you know, every death is, is different. I mean, my husband was disabled for almost seven years. The last three years he was on dialysis. We were doing home hemodialysis together. We grieved the loss of every function over that time as he, is, he was deteriorating. And his death freed both of us. So my experience with grief and death is totally different than somebody whose husband or wife has a heart attack. You know, one day they're there and one day they're not, or a car accident. That's a whole different grieving process but all of that can be made in a in a way that people can get through it with the right plans in place beforehand so it it is you know the three of us together i think we 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 really have the full story we're all that, widows and we've all gone through it yes yeah so and, we understand, and you're and, absolutely right. Grieving is really such a personal process and there's no time on it at all. And everybody's different, but the planning and being prepared and all so important and so incredibly helpful to people. To be and, able to you know, cope and better. for those who find themselves alone, the, the tools that are in that home system can be so empowering because I mean, like I, I did a crazy video my toilet was running and I replaced the flapper in the toilet and I did a little video on it. And <laughs> the it was the most watched the video. You ever it was the most video. watched video I ever made. And wow. it was a $9 fix. It took five minutes. And, you know, but it was so like people watching and said, I never knew that. My toilet's been running for years. You know, <laughs> like, oh my God. You know, <laughs> but it's sometimes the simplest thing can give you so much peace and 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 just make you feel like i've got this i can make it i can do whatever it is i choose to do yeah that's Control. right and whether whether you have a family or you are alone in the world the bottom line for me i think and for so many people is peace yeah. it's that exact word if we can live the rest of our lives here on earth feeling peace in each and every day. You know, that's that's something that's more valuable than anything in the world. That's what I strive for. So all of this pre-planning that we talk about is really bringing some, some peace into our life, right? Exactly. Not exactly. just for us, but for the future generations as well. Exactly. And isn't that what we all want? That's for sure. So tell tell anybody watching today, tell us how we can um, either find your, your book or the Crisis Planner Kit and tell us about the most important radio show that's on every week. I love that. Well, you can reach me at thecrisisplanner.com and that's my website and all of my products are on there. Uh, my books are all on Amazon. So if you look up Linda Fostek on Amazon, you'll find my books there. 
or you can order them through the website as well. The home system is available on the website. And I do a weekly radio show Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Uh, called The Linda Fostek Show, Get Off the Worry Go Round. And that's on boldbravemedia.com. And uh, you can access it there. Now, I want to throw one last thing out there, Linda, just because I, I, I know you and I know some of the things you're doing. And as far as being the crisis planner your whole life, yes, that's your profession and your passion, but you also have something else that's a little bit of a passion on the side that you started working on, I guess, with your dad when he was here. And it's just something like we all have that brings us joy something on the side in our life, like the, you're the photographer at home or when you quilt a blanket or when you do any of these things, tell us about your secret joy. My secret joy? I like that, yeah. Well, you know, my whole life, I have always tried to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. And, um, you know, I'm, so the crisis planner, fits right in with that, right? We're solutions to problems. And obviously um, the pandemic brought something forward that I really had been keeping in my scroll file because I could see a need for it, but it, the crisis, the, this pandemic really brought it to the forefront in that we're not teaching our children to be problem solvers. We're not encouraging their imagination and, cur and curiosity and their innovation on how to make things better. And if you think about it, the greatest mathematicians did some of their best work before they were teenagers. Theoretical physicists wow. peak at around 13 because they're not carrying all this garbage around in their head. They're not, they haven't been told, oh, that'll never work that too many times, you know, they just, they just, free thinking. And if you ever see a child who looks at a problem and says, oh, let's do it that way. And you're like, you never would have thought to do it that way, right? So um, schools are not teaching kids to be problem solvers. Nope. So nope. I'm working, I'm collaborating with an amazing illustrator on a series of children's books called The Science Labs, which are two Labrador retrievers uh, who bring questions and have people friends and animal friends that help them understand the world. And then it's gonna come with science lessons and projects that families can do together for four to seven year olds. So really wow. young kids, you know? Yeah. So, and uh, I'm having so much fun with it. it. It really is about making the world a better place. And that's my mission in life. Wow, so, I had two labs. I love I had two labs and they're tell wonderful. Tell everybody where they can learn more about the, the monthly membership and. Yeah, they can go to the sciencelabs.com and uh, that's my new website. That's just, we just put it up. We're looking to probably be shipping sometime this summer, the first books. And it comes with a whole discovery kit that the child gets a, a safety vest and goggles and gloves and, <laughs> and, and uh, a, a journal for the, you know, their observations and a little paw print because that's the Paw Print Academy and, uh, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. And we're looking to really engage children in, in the world and wow. to tap into just the pure genius that is out there because every child has a gift and we just need to help them unwrap it. Oh, so much needed. <laughs> I was an early childhood teacher. So, so much needed. Wow. That sounds wonderful. That's um, wonderful. But it still I mean, goes with woman... my problem solving thing. You know, well, businesses like... keep saying we're not producing any problem solving people. No. They keep saying that. So, no. right. Wow. right on. Wow. Really well, Linda's nice. a woman to be admired. You know, she's so filled in so many different areas and, and they're fulfilling to you and for everybody who utilizes your services. Yeah. So, and I'm, and I'm having fun. Yeah, I mean, uh, this month is a, is a big birthday for me. Uh, oh, turning 70, the end of nice. this month. Oh, nice. 70. I would have said 50. What? Happy birthday to you. Yeah. So, I mean, but my father was inventing things 
when he was 90, he was still creating solutions to problems. Wow. And, you know, mm -hmm. he, he was here one day and he was gone the next with, he didn't, you know, that was the way God took him. He did not have a long illness. He, he was just one of these amazing people that taught me to always look for solutions and mm. to not be whining and complaining all the time because that, I feel like we created generations of whiners and complainers mm. yeah. that, you know, oh, this is wrong. My life sucks. Everything's terrible. You know, well, do something about it. I mean, it's okay to feel bad for an amount of time, but my philosophy is, if I'm going to cry, I, I really get into the crying and I savor every tear and I taste every tear. And after an hour, I said, okay, you done now? <laughs> now what are you going to do about it? <laughs> I give myself a day. An hour is really good to bounce back. I usually give myself the day. And I enjoy life, Lifetime on Netflix and then I bounce back the next day. Exactly. You know, it's sort of like, okay, so that feels better and it's very cathartic to get that out of your system. But okay, now what do we do now? Put this big girl panties on and get back up and keep going. Exactly. Nice legacy. Very uh, nice. It was so nice having you here today, Linda. Thank yeah. you. You brought us a lot of good information. And again, the website, thecrisisplanner.com, or for those with young children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, the um, sciencelabs.com. Right. So thank you so much for being a part of the solution today. Oh, Wonderful. Thank you Doing for great work. Me. This was so much fun. And it was so great to see both of you today. Great seeing you too. And in our spare time, we have an online academy where we have courses including what does a dying person want right susan yeah and then each so of us find at eastend.academy and you can go on to amazon lisa has her couple of books there and i have my couple of books there you could just search our names and you'll see everything right in amazon and then we should also note that we do individual work um, i do bereavement counseling and susan uh, one on one consulting with families and individuals at the end of life or creative legacy work, leaving your stories and memories for your future generations. Multi talented women, isn't that wonderful? Sure is. Let's go out to lunch, ladies. <laughs> this is a whole circle here, you know? Wonderful. Wonderful. Really? Okay, well, thank you again, Linda. It was really wonderful. Thank you for sharing just amazing resources and amazing philosophy. Thank you so much for having Great. me. Thank Have you. a great day, everyone. Have a great day. Okay, take care.